Well, an executive order signed by President Obama has sparked controversy on both sides of the political aisle. The National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order was signed quietly Friday night. It gives the president the power to control U.S. resources in times of war and peace. And this includes food, water, oil, and transportation. Now, some are concerned this could lead to the executive branch having absolute authority over the nation's resources. And others question if this is all in preparation to go to war with Iran. Here is White House Press Secretary Jay Carney's answer to that question at a press conference. Some online commentary suggesting this gives the executive branch power to allocate energy, food, water in either peacetime or wartime. And there are some conservative blogs that are pushing the notion that this suggests the White House is preparing for a war with Iran. Can you explain what this executive order was? <laughs> Well, I cannot explain that reaction to it. I think it was a fairly uh, standard and routine uh, piece of business. So is this just business as usual, or does it give the executive branch an unprecedented amount of power? To talk more about this, radio host Alex Jones joins me now from Austin. Hi, Alex. Nice to see you. So we just heard the, the White House there. They're, they're brushing this off, saying it's not really a big deal. But should Americans be alarmed? Americans should be extremely alarmed. Uh, look, at the NDAA, where the president's saying he can secretly kill Americans and have bags put over our head and have us thrown into black vans to disappear forever. Or look at the TSA and the airports groping people. Look at the drones in our skies. Look at Army checkpoints now, the end of uh, Posse Comitatus. What's dangerous about this Cold War era uh, emergency legislation is that it was for basically nuclear war and it is for the government taking over infrastructure you notice carney didn't deny that he just says this is business as usual the difference is they're taking that out of the deep freeze and trying to thaw it out and the president said last year during the libya war that hey i don't need congress's approval to launch this war and then two weeks ago they uh, told congress uh, the secretary of defense did I don't need your authorization, the president doesn't need it to go into Syria. We'll do it if we want because the UN gives us permission. So we have a president and others saying they take orders from the UN and they're taking legislation designed for, uh, for when the US is under a nuclear attack and everything's been destroyed basically. And they're saying we're going to use this in peacetime. So, so that's the difference and we see the president shutting down power plants. Uh, without congressional approval so his buddies make more money with their power plants that are left on. We see the president nationalizing General Motors, giving tens of trillions to foreign banks. We see the president signing legislation to charge people with felonies if they protest at national security events. All of this is part of an acceleration. It was incremental. Now it's an acceleration towards classical tyranny. And so we would be insane if we weren't concerned about this new executive order. Now, Alex, the justification um, when this has been an executive, similar executive orders in the past when presidents signed them is that they could be used in special, these special powers can be used during times of emergency. But as you just mentioned, this is special, this is different because it allows the president to exercise this authority in times of peace. So when, what does this mean? When can the president now use absolute control? Well, the president may try to implement this. It's still unconstitutional. It's still illegal. They can pass an NDAA saying they can kill me and no one ever knows where I went. Uh, you know, literally blow my head off, tie a chain around me, throw me in the ocean. They're saying they have that power. I say it's illegal. I say it's a violation of common law, Bill of Rights, Constitution. But yes, you're right. The difference here is they're saying, hey, we can do this for any economic emergency or anything else, not just during a major world war. And so that's why this is so unprecedented and so incredibly dangerous. And that's why so many people are concerned about it. They just want to bring these powers in and then not have people challenge it. They don't like the fact that they're trying to power grab right now ahead of all these new wars they want to start, and people are standing up and saying if this is wrong, including 
Congress. Legislation has been introduced by Walter Jones of North Carolina that if Obama launches new wars in Syria or other areas without congressional approval, that impeachment begins. That has not been on any globalist corporate New World Order media here in the United States, not ABC, not Fox, not CNN. None of them have covered that impeachment proceedings have begun. Look, there's major power grabs happening, and if we don't stand up and decry them, we're all in serious, serious danger. Now, um, you mentioned war, and you, when a reporter asked the question if, per, if perhaps war with Iran, this is all in preparation for war with Iran, you heard some laughs there, but um, could that be part of the motivation behind this executive order? Yeah, think about that. Everyone knows that Israel says they're getting ready to strike Iran. There's open discussions of it. Uh, they've got special forces and proxy groups blowing up military bases in Iran now. That's on record. And we see the president putting the U.S. on a war footing and signing a declaration that allows the grabbing of the entire infrastructure. That's what it says. And people say, does this have to do with Iran? And people laugh like we're strange because we're actually keeping our eye on the ball. Now, that's the biggest sign there that you know how close we are towards this new war. They're sending Russian troops into Syria. The Russian ships are there docked. Uh, all of this, China, the Chinese president, two months ago said, prepare for war with the U.S. China has never talked like that. I mean, the world is racing towards a giant conflict. And the system doesn't want the people to know about this or to be part of the debate. They want to just say, oh, there's not anything going to happen with Iran. <laughs> That's crazy that there might be a war. How crazy? Oh, we're saying we'll secretly kill citizens if we want and use the military on them. Oh, it's crazy to not like that. Again, they don't want us to be awake to this. They don't want us to be discussing this because we might be able to stop this madness. So you think and, it and, might, uh, might be a little bit of a, it was an uncomfortable laughter. Um, one thing that was raising eyebrows, the timing of this order, it was signed late Friday night before St. Patrick's Day. Do you find the timing strange at all, Alex? Uh, well, it's, it's clear that they didn't want the public debating this or looking at this, just like the National Defense Authorization Act was signed in the afternoon on New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2011. Obama had said he didn't want to sign it. Then it turned out he demanded that the provision for secret arrest of citizens and secret killing and torture be added. You know, people ask, is this martial law? Yes, we've been under a soft form of martial law with secret arrest, warrantless spying, protesters getting beaten up, uh, all of these type of things going on for a long, long time. Now they're telling us torture is good, secret arrest of citizens is good, uh, the government taking over infrastructure is good. They don't deny all this stuff that we warn people about forever being real now. You know, before they'd laugh at you and say it wasn't real. Now it's real, but you're still a conspiracy theorist if you don't trust them. Well, then all the founding fathers of this country were conspiracy theorists. And the last thing I want to say is this. Throughout history, uh, governments have gotten out of control and hurt people. And I want everybody to understand, this is not even America doing this. The same banks you see openly appointing presidents and prime ministers in Europe the same mega banks announcing world government are the people that have captured America. It's these oligarchs that are doing this while they sit offshore playing our nations off against each other. We need to come together against the new world order global crime banking syndicate and restore our country's sovereignty before World War III is started. And the good news is the military and police and others that I talk to are waking up in droves. And that's why the system's trying to accelerate their takeover and trying to sign these pieces of legislation in the dead of night before a holiday when they think people will be too drunk to notice. Um, Alex, I do want to switch now to another topic. I know you have very strong opinions about this. Uh, also has to do with government expanding powers. Um, it's NSA's newest and biggest surveillance program. It's called Total Information Awareness. The program targets all kinds of electronic information from around the world. So this includes emails, tweets, texts, phone conversations, you name it, from U.S. citizens. And here, what you're looking at here is the center in Utah. It's being called the biggest spy machine ever. 
in existence. Alex, should citizens be concerned about how the government is handling this wealth of information that they will now have? Well, just five years ago, Bush denied they were doing this because it was illegal. And now I saw Wired magazine just a few days ago, and they said, watch what you say. And then they had the Secretary of Defense, they had the CIA director uh, in there, Petraeus, saying, oh, we're working with industry to have bugs and tracker systems built into all appliances. Your dishwasher is going to be listening to you. Watch what you say. We don't need warrants anymore. Just like they say they'll secretly arrest us. Just like they say they'll kill us. I mean, they're just flaunting all this tyranny in our face now. The head of the CIA, it's illegal, by the way, to have them involved domestically, doesn't care. He says, yeah, the CIA is watching you, America. That is a system in our face telling us you're a slave and trying to intimidate us. Well, you know what? Petraeus, I'm an American. I don't work for Goldman Sachs like you New World Order guys do. I'm here to defend my republic, and I'm not scared of you no matter what happens. What you're doing is illegal, and just because you publicly announce you're going to arrest and kill citizens, and that you're going to spy on us without warrants, and that you're going to put troops on the streets, and that you're going to do all this, doesn't make it okay. Just like when the troops got caught growing opium under orders three years ago in Afghanistan, they just hit it in plain sight and, and had Fox News and CNN go, yeah, the troops grow the opium and ship it to you in America, but if we catch you with it, you're going into prison. I mean, think about how they hide it in plain view. Yeah, we torture. Yeah, we spy on you. Yeah, we do all of this, but it's no big deal. Get used to it. You know what? We're not going to get used to it. You're indicting and convicting yourselves, globalists, that you're a bunch of un-American traitors, and the people are waking up to what you're doing. You have robbed this country blind of tens of trillions of dollars through the banker bailout. You're trying to conquer the U.S. through financial... Alex, um, I do want to bring in the justification for some of this. Um, I want to play this soundbite from you. It's from the Defense Secretary, Leon Panetta. Here's what he has to say about cybersecurity. That the next Pearl Harbor that we confront could very well be a cyber attack that uh, cripples our, uh, our power systems, our, our grid. So cybersecurity is a concern. You know, we're, we're becoming more, more modernized. We have hacktivists. Um, it's kind of part of a more modernized world. So shouldn't the government then take steps to address it if it, in fact, is a threat? Yeah, uh, the U.S. and Israeli government launched the Stuxnet on Iran and now are using the Stuxnet as a reason to have the government take over all the infrastructure and the Internet and put kill switches in all of the devices when they're the ones that have been caught before launching false flags against the Internet structure. Again, this isn't the U.S. government. It's long gone. This is a bunch of private globalists who have taken over and hijacked our country, saying, let us take over the Internet and shut down people's free speech to protect it. It's the opposite. That's not what they're doing. Uh, again, this isn't our government anymore. That's the point I'm trying to make here. And who is it then, Alex? Do what? Who is it then, if it's not our government that's doing this? It is... Six megabanks, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, and a handful of others that openly have announced a bank of the world. The Economist magazine admits they've got a Goldman Sachs takeover of Europe, a you know, hostile takeover of Europe. It's a private corporate fascist group that have bought off our governments and gotten control of our militaries. They control Europe. They control England. They control Australia. They control the United States. And everybody better look out, including those of us inside the empire, because these crooks know that they've got to fully take over or they're going to end up all going to jail. These are crooks. These are crazy bankers that make 40 to 1 bets with their own customers' money who have nuclear weapons. They are completely full of bravada and chutzpah, and everybody better look out. And here's the bad news. Appeasing them won't make them back off. It'll only make them get crazier. They're running wild. And They're we are going to be talking more about that later in the show, just how special interests um, affect our government and whether or not um, democracy um, is as present today as it has been in the past. Alex, pleasure to have you on the show. That was Alex Jones, host of The Alex Jones Show.